name is Mikhail Rogers and I am the arranger of Masters of the Symphony. This is a piece actually that I've been wanting to write for quite a while um, because it takes three of my favorite symphony tunes and uh, puts them together in a, uh, in a, in a medley that uh, is trying to be as true to the original as possible while still being playable for younger bands. And that's a tricky balance, but I, th I think I've managed it. And um, uh, I've performed it a couple of times so far, and uh, it's worked out really well, and the kids really enjoyed it. So this is a, a collection of three different symphonic tunes from the history of art music. Uh, the first one is the finale from Dvorak's Ninth, also known as the New World Symphony. The second theme is from Beethoven's Seventh. It's the second movement. And then the final part of the piece uh, takes the melody from Camille Sasson's Organ Symphony, which is his Symphony Number no. 3, and uh, puts it together to kind of round up the, this little mini suite, I guess you could say. Um, it's all one continuous movement. There are no movements to it. It's just uh, linked by transitions, and the transitions are based off of uh, the original works as well. So again, trying to get as much authenticity as possible into it. So real quickly, um, it starts off with the fourth movement to Dvorak's ninth, the de dum, the half step, de dum, de dum, bum 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 bum. So uh, we've got that there along with the main melody at, uh, at in measure six is covered by uh, trumpet and horn and also alto saxophone. And one thing that I had to make sure um, I did was I wanted to include this melody, but the triplet that is normally in the, in the uh, original um, is not notated in the score. Instead of bum, 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 it's bum, 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 bum. You can add the triplet. It's not a problem. It's just to, uh, for it to stay at this grade level, I had to adhere to the rubric of uh, the FJH uh, developing band series, and it doesn't allow triplets. So, uh, but anyone, including myself, I've <laughs> actually, when I performed it, I've put the triplet in there. So please feel free to do that in order to keep the authenticity of the piece. But if you don't want to, it's notated with eighth notes, and so you could do it either way. And uh, measure 14, we've got the real pretty uh, counter melody and the main thing is when you have this you want to think of it as a four bar phrase instead of a two bar phrase so we don't want bum 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 doesn't really work. We want it to be one idea. Bum, 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 <clears throat> And make that basically one continuous idea by stagger breathing. Okay, and, uh, and that can be accomplished both in the, the little woodwind second idea and also the brass first idea. Uh, measure 22, we've got that main element coming back here with the uh, with the big hits that's in the latter part of the movement, the bum 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 dun 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 ba da ba 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 da da bum. So we want to uh, bring out those hits, but without covering up the main melodic line. The kids love it because they get to play nice and big and full um, without actually, you know, over over. Uh, doing the tone quality of the instrument, so it's really good. Um, it goes into the little horn solo. The and then it goes into the Beethoven right there. Okay, so that goes into measure 33, which is when the Beethoven starts. And the link is there uh, with that little horn solo. The horn solo is also cued in the alto sax. So if uh, you want the horns to cover it as a section, that's fine. If you want to cover it as a solo, that's fine. You can also give it to the alto saxophone, either a section or a solo, either way. The, the horn is notated on a D below the staff, D, uh, <clears throat> e, F, E, D, D. So it's very easy from a range standpoint. I'm a horn player, so I, I know how problematic that area can be. So uh, I notated it in a range that makes 
total sense and is very easy to play for a horn. So um, if you've got a scared horn player, it's totally okay. They can handle it. Um, and you can also double it with alto sax if you like. When you get to measure 33 and the Beethoven starts, um, we want to make sure that this is not taken too fast. The uh, tempo is going to slow down there, and um, it's got that kind of uh, dark processional type atmosphere to it. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, so not too, not too heavy and also not too fast. We want it to be a little haunting, you know, a little, uh, a, a little dramatic and a little haunting. Um, and it, does, it doesn't go through the entire buildup uh, of, you know, all the way up to the fortissimo part in the original symphony. I think that would have been too much. Um, the students just want to play the really nice melody and want to hear it a couple of times. So um, I use this as the middle section of the suite, and it is written piano, mezzo-piano, uh, in order to give a contrast to the Dvorak, which came right before. So I think it lasts just long enough in order to be satisfying, um, but not too tedious. The final part of the piece is based off of the chorale from Camille Sasson Organ Symphony in the, uh, th uh, the final movement. And if you listen to the original, the first time it's played, it's more of a chorale, and the second time it's played, it's more of a almost a march, kind of like a triumphal march type of style. And so what I did was I took it, took the march style, because we've already done the chorale kind of with the Beethoven. So I upped the tempo and laid a little uh, soft percussion work underneath it and then made this big glorious type of, of marcato march style uh, medley. And it it works really well with, uh, with chimes. There's a chimes part in there that you can do. Um, if you don't have chimes, that's fine. You can use bells. It works just as fine. And there's also a couple of meter uh, changes in here. The reason I did that, and, and the meter changes are basically going from 4-4 four, four to 2-4 four for one measure and then going back to 4-4. Four, four. And the reason I did that was because uh, Sasson doesn't actually put... Um, every single beginning of phrase on the downbeat of the measure. So in order for it to sound authentic, I had to slip in a 2-4 bar every now and then. It's actually way easier than it sounds. It's not difficult at all. Um, it's just a matter of cueing the entrances, you know. So there's just one or two places where that happens. Um, in the last couple of measures, we have the standard, you know, tonic and dominant chords. Bum, 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 Bum. And of course, what I do is I put a tiny snippet of the Ode to Joy medley, um, three measures from the end, the dun da 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 bum, ta. Okay, so that gives it a little bit of an extra, oh, that's kind of cute, you know. So um, anyway, I just, I had a lot of fun writing this one. I really, really love this one. Um, I've played it a couple of times since I've written it, and uh, I, I just love how it all came together. I've been wanting to take these uh, melodies and put them together in a, in a, in a way that's um, uh, accessible to younger bands and uh, still sounds good. And um, I'm really, really pleased with it. I hope you are too. If you are a fan of any of these works, I think you will really enjoy uh, the arrangement for band. So thank you very much for your attention and I hope you enjoy Masters of the Symphony.